Number seven, shared birthdays. Think back to any classroom you sat in or the last flight you took. There's a good chance that someone there shares the same birthday. You probably think that doesn't seem likely and it might not even be true in your case, which just makes you the exception, but it's mathematically true. Mathematician Richard von Mises termed it the birthday paradox, where in a group of 23 people, there's a 50% chance two of them share the same birthday. Bring this up to 75 people and that likelihood is almost guaranteed at 99.9%. Your brain is going haywire thinking this can't be right because there are 365 days in a year. So logically, you'd need at least half that many people for a coin flip odds. But it's not about matching your birthday to everyone else's. It's about every possible pairing in the room. 23 people create 253 unique comparisons. And that density of connections is where math brings clarity. Cryptographers exploit this exact principle in hash collision attacks, where matching outputs happen far sooner than you'd expect in massive data sets. The paradox isn't that the math is broken, it's that your brain never learned to count combinations exponentially. Number six, why rare events aren't rare. You ever have a dream about an old friend you haven't spoken to in years, then suddenly they text you out of the blue. You're probably thinking you got that lifelong interconnected bond, that homies for life type of connection, but logically, it's just math. Statistician calls this the law of truly large numbers, where seemingly improbable things happen given massive scale. There are over 8 billion people having dreams, making decisions, having lucky breaks, and living through random moments every second. That one in a million coincidence stops being rare when you multiply it by 8 billion daily events. It becomes inevitable. This is where the law of truly large numbers says, with enough chances, the absurdly improbable becomes certain. Joan Ginther won the lottery four times. Sounds impossible until you realize millions buy tickets for decades, creating millions of opportunities for lightning to strike repeatedly. Casinos don't panic when someone hits a jackpot because over millions of spins, their house edge grinds everyone down to expected loss. Your lucky streaks aren't the universe speaking to you. They're what happens when infinity rolls dice at scale. The magic disappears when you understand the sample size and zoom out to see the full picture. Number five, order hidden inside randomness. Imagine a monkey sitting at a typewriter and indefinitely smashing keys completely at random. Given infinite time, that monkey will eventually type out the entire works of Shakespeare. This sounds absurd, but it's a mathematical certainty rooted in measure theory, with a 50-key typewriter hitting 95% accuracy for one specific sentence would take billions of years. But without the constraint and limitations of time, it guarantees that every possible finite string of text will eventually appear. Randomness over eternity doesn't just allow for order, it demands it. Scientists ran simulations confirming that with enough time, total chaos produces total structure. The theorem isn't about monkeys, it's about how probability behaves when time has no ceiling. Infinite trials mean infinite outcomes, and somewhere in that endless expanse, every arrangement exists. The universe isn't orderly because it was designed, it's orderly because randomness, given enough room, exhausts every possibility until patterns emerge by sheer brute force. Number four, the pattern in almost every number. Pull up any data set from the real world, stock prices, river lengths, earthquake magnitudes, population figures, financial records, now look at the first digit of each number. You might think each digit from one to nine has an equal chance to appear first, but it turns out the number one appears almost 30% of the time. The number two shows up about 18% 
By the time you get to nine, it's down to less than 5%. This is Benford's law discovered by astronomer Simon Newcomb in 1881 and rediscovered by physicist Frank Benford in 1938. The formula is logarithmic, which means the probability of digit D appearing first is log base 10 of one plus one over D. It works because naturally occurring numbers grow exponentially, spending more time in lower ranges before jumping scales. It's so consistent across naturally occurring data that forensic accountants use it to detect fraud. If financial records don't follow Benford's distribution, someone's cooking the books. Enron's numbers violated this law before the scandal broke. The universe runs on logarithms, and when humans fake it, the math catches them every time. Number three, streaks in coin tosses. Flip a coin a thousand times and you'll see six or seven heads in a row, even possibly 10. Because statistically, within those thousand coin flips, there's about an 80% chance a streak of six will occur. You're probably thinking that doesn't make sense because randomness should look scattered. But true randomness includes clumps, and patterns. Calculating using the mathematical system called Markov chains, the longest expected streak in 1,000 flips is around 10. Each and every single flip has 50-50 odds regardless of what came before. And over enough trials, unlikely sequences become normal. This is why people lose fortunes at roulette, convince red is due after a streak of blacks. And that's exactly what happened in 1913 at Monte Carlo. The wheel hit black 26 times consecutively and gamblers lost millions doubling down on red because they've convinced themselves that it should balance out. So the probability of it being red significantly increased but the wheel kept spinning black because it has no memory, no obligation to intuition. Randomness doesn't owe you balance in the short term. It only promises it over infinity. Number two, the Monty Hall paradox. You're on a game show. You are presented with three doors in front of you. One hides a car and two hide goats. You pick door number one. The host, who knows what's behind every door, opens door number three to reveal a goat. Now he asks if you want to switch to door number two or stick with your original choice. Most people's intuition says it doesn't matter. 50-50 odds either way. Mathematics says you're wrong. Switching gives you a two-thirds chance of winning the car. Staying gives you only one-third. When you made your initial choice, you had a one in three shot at picking the car and a two in three shot at picking a goat. The host revealing a goat doesn't change your initial probability. It concentrates the remaining probability onto the other unopened door. If you picked a goat initially, which happened two thirds of the time, switching wins. Marilyn Vosavant published this in her column in 1990 and received thousands of letters telling her she was wrong. She wasn't. Computer simulations confirm it. Bayesian probability proves it. And this proves that your brain can't update beliefs when new information arrives. Intuition doesn't do conditional probability. It does feelings. And feelings lose to math every time. Number one, Simpson's paradox. A medical treatment works better for men than women in every age group. But when you combine all data, it looks like it works better for women overall. The trend completely reverses. This inversion is Simpson's paradox, which was named after statistician Edward Simpson, who described it in 1951. This phenomenon happens when a hidden variable like group size warps the combined result opposite to individual pieces. UC Berkeley got sued in 1973 for gender discrimination because overall admission rates favored men, but breaking down data by department showed most biased toward admitting women. The paradox occurred because women applied to competitive departments with lower acceptance rates overall, while men applied to easier ones. Aggregating without accounting for structure flipped the truth. Averages lie when context gets erased, 
One data set tells two opposite stories depending on how you slice it, and both can be mathematically correct. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe to see more.